Hi, this is Shadi and today we will talk about predetermined fights and also professional wrestling. Fake fights was a phenomenon that plagued uh, South America, particularly Brazil, show business, circus, and people just trying to get people to go to their school and learn judo or jiu-jitsu from them. Uh, predetermined fights and pro wrestling are not the same thing. Predetermined fights can pretty pretty much look very real actually while uh, pro wrestling etc there's this hype there's the media behind them there is this uh, show behind them so it is somewhat different and people that cannot fight they are just built big can just go on and do something while predetermined fight is actually between two very talented fighters that go unnoticed that they are fake and they are just two raise money actually and also just bring people to their schools so this was something that was done and still being done till this day uh, what would make more money uh, being in the WWE or a part of the IJF World Tour or IBJJF the answer is obvious so a lot of people even talented fighters after retiring they would go in that route of professional wrestling because that's where the money is and that's where the funding is so even Craig Jones said that if I would get a pro wrestling contract, I would take it because I will make a lot more money. So before I tackle this subject, I would like to talk to you about today's sponsor, Josh Simon. Josh Simon is a second degree black belt under Helson Gracie himself. He is currently a professor at the Gracie Ohio with over 25 years of jiu-jitsu under his belt. We share a passion for history, so he came up with his own clothing line for the lesser known jiu-jitsu masters that really helped shape what we now call BJJ and really plant the pillars of Brazilian jiu-jitsu. People like Jacinto Ferro, Cheo Omori, and of course Donato Pires. Now, he is currently shipping in the US only, but I'm sure with enough demands, you can easily reach him through his website. Uh, I will link it in the description below. If you are, if you care and want something and you are not in the US, you can easily contact him. And also you will find uh, historical articles that are easily assimilated and just very well written. I will also link, leave the link in the description uh, below. So please check it out, Josh Simon simonbjj.com now back to the video so um, this whole thing with the you know predetermined fights it was actually a lot be being done a lot between the 1910s and 1930s so uh, because there were a lot of talented fighters that did this we could not know which were fake which were real so uh, the idea was not very much uh, liked by the media especially so there were a lot of accusations of fake fights in the newspapers uh, and co people commentating that these are faked or maybe trying to slander other by painting them as fake fighters in order to have uh, some money or gain a lot of money. So uh, we cannot know exactly which fights were fake, especially between judo masters or jiu-jitsu masters or wrestler versus judoka or, you know, capoeira, etc. Um, but a lot of them were actually very real, especially those like by Carlos Gracie. So um, the fights would have a lot of wins and losses. So like I said, it is very impossible to know uh, which fight was actually legitimate. So these criticism were very much being done by the people, especially something from like the Japanese culture. For example, uh, Kano Sensei was very much against this particular uh, thing because you are essentially being deceitful so when Maeda was doing the whole circus thing and fighting for or prize fighting and you know putting up a show he was not very much uh, fond of this so uh, for example when uh, Maeda went with Tomita their uh, demonstration was actually through kata why kata because kata first of all you're show it's called form you're actually showing good technique you're showing the etiquette you're showing respect to your partner you're showing respect to the people that are watching and you are not being deceitful it was clearly a demonstration what we what we now call a demonstration so 
but there were challenges essentially for example if you go back to my Maeda videos you would see that they were challenged by uh, college wrestlers football players uh, him and Tomita and they would somehow uh, sometimes win and sometimes lose because they were far bigger and they were muscular you know your typical jock wanting to challenge the little person so um, they did do real fights but when it comes to demonstrations they actually held kata and not fake fights so Kano sensei was very adamantly against this and there is this uh, theory that they would held his rank up until he stopped doing this back in 1941 if you remember Maeda got his ranking a day before his death so um, they may a lot of people theorize that there is a lot of connection between you know Maeda participating in fake fights or you know show business and really being withheld from his rank from the Kodokan so when it, uh, I'm sure you've heard of the term kayfabe when it comes to professional wrestling. Um, there is a lot of kayfabe going on, meaning like you really put on a show, uh, like you are truly fighting. If someone doesn't know the culture, they would never know that this is fake. For example, while we were growing up, I'm sure you've seen like the um, the chairs being hit in the head, the back. You hear it, you know shattering almost the back or when they fall down from the top rope you would hear like the the mat almost breaking so this is all to look real but at the same time it's fake so you have what is called stiff works which is predetermined outcomes fighters which exchange a lot of legitimate strikes and submissions you also have something that called turns into a shoot someone goes uh, off script and really fights someone uh, how do you say like really hurt them if you remember Ricky Dozan versus Kimura is a great example Kimura accidentally struck uh, Ricky Dozan on the lower part of the abdomen or a lot of people say it was groin strike and he really went ballistic and really struck Kimura for real so it was a fake fight but it was predetermined with a particular result but uh, Ricky Dozan actually went off script so that's one of the example of a shoot so you also have screw jobs when you know trying to do something for a particular outcome but um, the organizers really go off script and really just change absolutely everything so this is mainly in the works of pro wrestling now let's talk about a predetermined fight and one of the greatest predetermined fight is actually between Carlos Gracie and Cheo Omori remember I talked about this in my Cheo Omori video I'll link it at the end um, the first time that they had their little feud and they challenged each other Gustavo Gracie actually the, organized an event for this match and he essentially tried to bribe Cheo Omori for a lot of money so he would lose to Carlos but um, Cheo Omori really how do you say uh, negotiated a lot and he would not accept to, to lose because he wasn't very fond of Carlos so essentially he settled for a draw and the fight went down nobody knew that it was fake it was actually pretty much done very well done in order to reschedule a match so the idea was to have someone win or lose or a draw in order to reschedule a rematch so people would come in even more and just pay a lot more money so there was no like uh, media in a sense that you know how to hype a fight like today like there is this background story to it there was none of that there was just a fight hyped because two they were very much good and talented fighters and they wanted to advertise their school basically but the rematches were pretty much real so if you remember the rematch you had um Carlos Gracie breaking Cheo Omori's arm with an Ude Garami and then he slips off he wouldn't tap out he took him down I believe it was uh, like a double leg and he would just scramble and grapple with him up until the end of the fight and it was uh, deemed a draw then Elio Gracie came and fought Cheo Omori again he also fought Takeo Yano now what is uh, truly admirable about Elio Gracie is he would never have what is called a fake fight or a predetermined fight he would always fight for real results uh, one example look at Kimura fight he absolutely got 
uh, mauled yet he never you know said I'll pay you and let me look like a winner so uh, this is something that uh, Robert Drysdale said that uh, it is one of the best thing about Elio Gracie is that he never wanted to participate in what is called fake fights so very similar to Kano Sensei in that uh, aspect. So also you had George Gracie uh, who had what is called uh, fixed matches. So a lot of these uh, great fighters like Yukio Tani, uh, Sadakazu Uyanishi, Maeda, George Gracie, Carlos Gracie, they were very talented fighters. Uh, but yet they participated in this because that's where the money is and that's how you keep bringing uh, clients and that's how you keep bringing the, the students into your schools and also that's how you would draw attention to yourself basically so uh, you had Ryanishi and uh, Yukiotani doing this in Europe and also Maeda doing this in the Americas so it was a very big phenomenon so there is difference between a fake fight which is can look very much real between two talented uh, judo or wrestlers or whatever discipline and you had what is called the professional wrestling which is kind of like a circus basically so you have to for example people would be like really big really um, just look freaky basically a, a circus so um, fake fi professional wrestling you would just get paid to show up and not necessarily win or lose very different to a fixed fight or like the challenges of that the Gracies would do also uh, that's they would do this because they would prevent injuries on their tours so uh, fake fights professional wrestling or not you would do this to prevent injury and keep doing more matches and also keep uh, you know making more money you if your you know fighters are injured you're not advertising yourself you're not making any money so uh, that's why a lot of the times they would do fake fights especially in the circuses so for example the bodybuilders they would do these photo shoots and they are squatting like 500 pounds they're actually fake weights but um Jean-Pierre Fuchs actually tried to do a photo shoot with real weights and he just shattered his knees. There is a very famous photo of this. I'm not gonna put it because it's just too gruesome. So uh, that's why a lot of the times they would have these fake fights. So uh, the media was not actually very big of this, like I said, even the people, but nonetheless they were doing it behind the scenes in order to you know, keep themselves healthy and also promote themselves. So if you have any thing to add about this particular subject let me know down below also don't forget to check out josh simon's gallery for historical shirts and also historical articles if you have anything else to add let me know down below this was shady and thank you for listening